Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with PCBros.Tech and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a low profile full size bracket with a half height bracket and also just a couple of the differences between a mid tower and a small form factor or DT system. So in this specific video, I'm going to be using two different RX 6400s. Well, by different, I mean one already has a low profile or half height bracket. The other one still has a full size bracket. Now, naturally most low profile cars always come with the full height bracket installed. I could not explain to you why. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but this is an actual half height card. And what this means is if we look at the back of these two systems right here, you'll notice that this system here on the PCI lanes has very tall brackets, which will take this adapter right here. But this system has brackets that are about half the height exactly. And as you can see, those are right here. There's actually already a graphics card installed in the system and it's gonna take this bracket right here, which is the half height one. So now, let's go ahead and just get into it. Let's show you guys how to actually get off one of these XFX style cards. So the first most important thing of doing one of these brackets is actually having the right tools. So I'm actually using one of the LTT screwdrivers here, but the actual brand and all that doesn't matter. The most important thing is having the right size Phillips. So inside here, this is a PH1. Now I'm gonna pull out a couple of different bits here so you guys can see the difference. This is like your standard Phillips that you're gonna see in most industries. This is a PH2, which you'll notice is a really good size difference. So PH2, PH1, the smaller the number, the smaller the Phillips. And then we should even have a PH0 in here, which as you can see, here's the PH1, PH0, quite a bit smaller. So this, we're only gonna need the PH1 and the PH0, but really you can probably use these pretty interchangeably on these cards as it doesn't have to be an exact science. The most important thing though, is you're taking out these tiny screws here. You do not wanna strip these screws out because if you do, then you're gonna to have to RMA this card or worse, try to figure out a way to drill these screws out and possibly screw up the graphics card. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with this full height card because as you can see, here is our low profile bracket. The bracket is going to be about half the height, but it's gonna have the same uh, video adapters. These two screws here, so one, two, and then you have usually two more, which are going to be right here and right here. So one, two, three, four. So on paper, this looks very easy. Okay, just take off these two and these two. But the problem is you'll notice you can only get to one of the screws that hold this bracket on. And the reason being is this whole plate right here needs to come off, which isn't too bad. So basically we're gonna take out these screws here so we're gonna use the pH theory. As you can see, the pH zero fits really well. It's actually staying in on its own, but then notice the pH one, I can spin it in the actual screw with my finger. That's not good. That's just guaranteed to strip it out. We don't want that. And then obviously pH two, I mean, it's not even, doesn't even look close. So pH zero it is for this and use that. Like I said, you could even use a glass a screwdriver kit. Although I do recommend having something that you can get a lot of torque on, like a really big handle like this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get these screws off. Now you don't actually have to take every single one of these out just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to. I know that a couple of these screws actually take off the internal cooler, but that's not a big deal. We're just gonna go ahead and do all four just for simplicity. But once I finish this, I will show you which ones are actually essential. So right now we're doing the top four screws. Pretty simple. Like I said, when you have the right size bit, this is really easy. It's not um, too hard at all. Just make sure you use good pressure. Make sure you're not spinning. If you slip, even a couple times, there's a good chance you're gonna round out the inside of that screw and you're not gonna be able to get that off. So now we're gonna go to the other side. The other side, you're gonna notice right under the PCIe cover, you're gonna have exactly four more screws that pretty much mirror the ones that we just did. So once again, we're just coming in here. And these screws should be really easy to get out when you have the adequate bit. If you don't have the right bit, yeah, it's gonna definitely be a struggle. And like I said, you'll probably end up stripping them out. All right, we're on the last screw now. I can already feel the fan getting pretty loose, which like I said, you don't actually have to. I, I didn't even know this until recently, but I always just took off all four because it was just quicker in my opinion. But as you can see, the middle two screws are what hold this fan in place. So you see how you have one hole here, one hole here. Those are all the fan in place. So you only need to take the outer two screws out. So basically this screw and this screw and then on the bottom, this screw and this screw. You don't have to touch the middle two that are closest to the actual fan. So now we got the four screws out, or in your case, probably two. And so as you can see here, 
here is our two screws that were really the biggest problem to access. Now, these ones technically are a little bit bigger than a pH zero. Yeah, they're a good amount bigger. So I am gonna go to the pH one um, just to guarantee I don't strip this out. So I'm gonna probably just hold this on the table because I don't wanna risk. Um, I want as much pressure as I can get so that I'm not just spinning inside the screw. So there's number one. And then here is number two. Now, by the way, if you were wondering, all of the screws that actually go into the plate that hold the fan on are the same. The two screws that hold the bracket on are the same. These screws right here are gonna be slightly different. So we're gonna go back to our pH zero here. So once again, pH zero for the very tiny screws again. These ones I believe are a little bit longer. Yeah. So they're a little bit different thread pitch too actually. So you can't really use these screws. I mean, you could force them in there interchangeably, but ideally you're gonna have uh, the two screws that actually hold the uh, the other, the tiny screws that hold the bracket on. Just make sure you keep them separate. So as you can see, we got them separate. So now here's a new bracket. We're gonna basically just do reverse order. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these larger, actually I'm gonna go ahead and do smaller screws first just so I don't have to swap the bits out again. All right, so now we're gonna use the the two of two small screws that we have that go into the plate here. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my screwdriver back on the bit. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down. I'm gonna switch it here. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down those two screws we just did. Now they do not need to be super tight. I almost recommend them, uh, recommend tightening them slightly less than they were because there's really no reason to, um, have these screws incredibly tight because it's not like there's not a whole lot of moving parts or anything. These screws aren't just going to pop out on, on their, their own. All right, so we got that down. Let's go ahead and get the other one down. All right, just kind of just kind of hand tight. All right, so now we're good to go ahead and put our bracket back on. Um, you might even want to go ahead and get the fan secured first. I think we're going to be able to do it um, with the fan actually in. So let's see here. We're just gonna kind of hold this up so you guys can see. So I'm just trying to get all of these screw holes to line up internally. So we're gonna start off with the fan because I'm more worried about getting the fan kind of centered first. There we go. All right, so our we at least got a few holes lining up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. All right, so we got one screw in the fan. And now notice how now I'm literally just using my, my finger strength to actually tighten this. There's no, with these tiny screws, you really don't need to go um, super tight. I'm just doing kind of opposites here. It's always good whenever you're screwing anything in to kind of do opposing corners and whatnot, just so you don't tighten one set up too much. Cause then you're just gonna have to loosen anyways, cause it's probably not gonna line up. All right, so we're getting the last fan screw in now. And like I said, I kind of did opposing corners something you kind of learn as a, as a mechanic. And now we're gonna go ahead and do, so these are the four screws I was saying that you really have to take out, because watch this. We only have the fan screwed in. You can take this whole entire bracket with the fan assembly off without actually um, taking the fan off like I did. So I basically just did like an extra step, but I just figured I'd show you guys. Um, you know, some people just might find it easier just to take the whole thing off, but it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm gonna get one. Let's go ahead and go to the other side just so that we don't have to we don't over tighten one side and then we can't tighten the other side as easily. As you can see, we have two identical um, half height cards. So the cards themselves are already half height, but obviously now the brackets are. So now these will fit into a small form factor or a DT, which is basically a small form factor, but just a little bit taller. Let's go ahead and show you guys how to get the cards in now. All right, so this Optiplex in specific is the Optiplex 7010, if you're curious, which I believe is third gen. This one actually has an i3 in it. Now, I think this one already has an actual GPU, so I wanna show you guys what that looks like, because um, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Uh, but as you can see, your panel is gonna come off. Sometimes these panels are pretty hard to get off because basically, whenever you pull that lever, it's doing this. Sometimes you can push this in if you can't, if your um, actual hinge isn't working. But as you can see, we got a fairly dirty Optiplex here. So we do actually have a card already installed in the system. And I wanted to leave that in just because if that happens to you, it's not a big deal. We're just gonna show you how to get an old card out. So the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of pull up and out on this plastic bracket. These are pretty flimsy, so just kind of be careful with them. They can break. If they do, it's not the end of the world. Um, so as you can see, this, this card is a little bit different. This one has a ribbon cable for your VGA. 
Um, and so it takes up two lanes. Our new card is only a single lane card that doesn't have a second bracket. So now what you're gonna do is there's this little blue bracket or little blue, it's called a, a PCI latch down here. You just barely need to kind of push it to the side and you're gonna pull up, kind of wiggle the card. Don't just use all your strength to pull it out because if you do, you might end up breaking the little lane. So I kind of am gonna turn an angle here. So it's this right here. We're basically just taking our finger and just barely moving that. It's just plastic, it's not super hard to uh, maneuver. And so now we're gonna go ahead and take our, our new card. And by the way, if you had no card in here before, there's a good chance you have some covers right here. You just pop those covers out. They just come right out once you lift this up. So now we're gonna take our new card. We're gonna very slowly and gently line our PCI lane. And also we gotta make sure that this over here is lining up. All right, so we're looking good, we're looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of slowly pushing down with equal pressure. And you should hear a little click. And now once you're good to go, you should notice that this up here lines up well. It's not bulging out or anything. It can't really move. And you don't notice down here, we can get to both of our display ports just fine. And so now we're gonna go ahead and take this and pop it back over. You should hear a nice click. And once you're done, you should have your half height card installed and you should be good to go. Now in our full size system, like the one that's over here, it's gonna be very similar. You're gonna have the full size bracket on that card and it's gonna pop in the exact same way. There's gonna be a lot more room to maneuver too in the full size system. That's one of the advantages. You can fit bigger cards and you can also get your hands in there a little easier. But now we're just gonna go ahead and do reverse order. We're gonna put this card, or sorry, the panel back on and then there we go. We got a finished and ready to game um, older style Optiplex. Uh, this works on Lenovo's, HP's. They all go in pretty much the same way. Um, and like I said, this is a small form factor. If you have a ultra small form factor or USFF, those typically will not take a graphics card at all because they just don't have any extra PCI lanes or anything and they're very small. They just won't fit a card. Um, but obviously a small form factor, DT or mid tower like we have over here will all take a graphics card. So now the only other thing you really need to do is just once you get into Windows, as long as your graphics card display is working, you need to actually get your drivers installed. So we're gonna to go to the AMD driver suite. We do have a whole separate video on PC Bros, the same YouTube channel, if you'd like to see how to get drivers and updates and all that good stuff installed. Um, make sure that when you install a graphics card, you do plug in your display to one of these ports. If you try to use one of these ports that are for your integrated graphics, you're likely not gonna get video out. And if you do get video out, it's, your games are gonna run really bad because they're running on the integrated graphics and not your nice new discrete graphics card. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you check out the Toasty Rose YouTube channel and we'll see you guys in the next one.